Hello everyone and welcome to the series of CSS Clear Concept. In this video series, we are going to talk about some of the concepts that we often use in CSS but we are confused in the differences between them. These concepts are closely related to each other but we often ignore the minute differences between them. Today, we are going to talk about display, block, inline and inline block. These three values of display property are very often used inside CSS and they are the building blocks of our HTML page. So let's get going. In CSS, everything is a box. There are two types of boxes. One of them is block and inline. Block boxes are the ones that occupy the entire space, whereas inline are the ones that occupy only the needed space. That's the main difference between them. Let's go. Some of the block elements inside CSS are div, paragraph, form, h1 to h6 headings, and li elements, and many more. Some of the inline elements that are well known and often used are span, image, anchor tags, and strong tag. I'll explain you the difference between block and inline using a drawing. So let's go onto the drawing board. So, as I said, let's take an example that this is our page. This is quite a simple HTML page and let's assume that this is our body tag. Inside body tag, if I add four consecutive divs without any CSS styling, so those divs would appear something like this. This is D1, div2, div3 and div4. Now this is an block element it occupies the entire space of the page, whatever the width that is available to it. If we mention, let's say, three or four image tags or probably span tags, then it would happen something like this. Let's say we mention five span tags in a row. This would appear something like this, S1, S2, S3, S4, S5. These are span tags. Now, why do they appear fundamentally like this? There is a user agent style sheet available on the browser. So that user agent style sheet has a property for div, that is display block. So in the user agent style sheet, div element would have a style, something known as display block. And span would have the display as inline. Now, as I said, Block properties occupy the entire space of the page and they start from a new line every time whereas inline occupy only the required amount of space and they do not start from the new line. They just flow with the amount of space that is available and if you shrink the page the S5 or S4 would come down and it would flow like a text. So if I change the fundamental style of div from display block to display inline then the divs would start appearing like span and spans would start appearing like divs. So you can change the width and height. The third difference between the block and inline element is block elements can be given height and width. Whereas inline elements cannot be given height and width. That is one of the major drawbacks while using an inline element. So that is one of the major drawbacks that you have to be careful while using an inline element. Many people struggle on this concept. So let's say you did div display inline and you did span. Display block. Now the things would start appearing in opposite way. So let's say if this was my page, the divs would now start appearing like this. The spans, on the other hand, would start appearing like this. And they'll start on, and they'll start occupying entire space on the page. Now we have third type of display property that is inline block. What is that? Inline block means the elements behave like an inline element, but they can be given height, width, margin, and padding. That means that by default the elements would be behaving like inline elements and you have to explicitly mention height and width of the element if you wish to cover the entire space if you need to add margin and padding you will have to explicitly mention it so let's say 
button is one of the inline block elements default inline block elements of HTML so let's say if you have this page and you created a button and you created a button by default button has a user agent style sheet of display inline so that is the default behavior of the button now if I give additional properties to the button like let's say fit 100% height 300 pixels you can also give margin and padding let's not give margin and padding for this example but then the button would appear something like this the width would be 100% and height would be 300 pixels so that is the fundamental difference between block inline and inline block elements. Let's get started with the hands-on. So let's say this is my HTML. So let's say we have this HTML. Okay. And I'll say div div1. And I'll make five different copies of the div. Now, if I go ahead and run this, Go ahead and start it as I can see that my divs are aligned in separate separate lines so if I go ahead and inspect the element I'll see the div is occupying the entire space in the box model so if you see the blue part that's the amount of space that is occupying it's occupying the entire width of the page that is hundred percent and if I go to the user agent style sheet for div I can see that it is by default given the property of display block. Now same thing with span elements. So let's say I create span element. So I have created five span elements. I'll go ahead and check these five span elements appear in a single line and they occupy only the amount of space that they need. The other thing was span elements don't have height and width. So let's give height and width to span element. Let me give border first so that you can just imagine. Uh, two pixel, one pixel, solid, red. So okay, okay I've given height and uh, a border to this span element, I'll give height. 100 pixel so no effect I'm increasing the height no effect on it let's increase the width no effect on it so as you can see that I cannot give height and width to the span elements but I will be able to give the margin and padding to this element so I have given the margin it occupies the space I'll give padding, it occupies the space. So margin and padding work, height and width do not work in inline elements. The same thing is opposite with block elements. Height and width work with the block elements, height and width work with the block elements, and margin and padding also work with them. So all those things work with a block element. So let's try it. So here we are, height is working. Let me give something less. One fifty pixel. So height works. Width. Let's try thirty percent. Yes, it does work. So height and width work. Margin. Thirty pixel. Yes, it works. Padding. Fifty pixel. Yes, it does work. So all these properties work with HTML block elements. So we have margin, we have padding, we have height and we have width of the content.
so all these things work with a block element whereas in an inline element apart from margin and padding height and width do not work on inline elements now let's reset this now let me give all the elements a border so it's easily understood so I've given border all the elements and now if I say all the divs are supposed to be display in line then they will start behaving like span and if I say that all the spans should be display block then it will override the native behavior of the style sheet of user agent style sheet and will start behaving like the tips the block elements so they'll start occupying the entire space as discussed we have the third property that is inline block elements so inline block elements are basically inline elements but can be given height and width so basically so one of the inline elements in HTML is button Let me, so this is the button now by default in the user agent style sheet if you go and see the button is a display inline block element that means if I were to give that means it is behaving like an inline element it takes only the required amount of space and we can see by replicating the number of buttons let's say we had four buttons all the four buttons would appear on the same line now let's say if I were to say height of this button should be 45 pixel so we can get height of the button change to 45 pixel we can also give margin and padding to it we can also give width to this button 100% so this takes up the entire space of the page so that is the fundamental difference between display inline block and inline block I hope you enjoyed it if you like this channel please like and subscribe to this channel below in the description link and share it thank you